I am pleased to have this opportunity to share with you a small part of my experience of atomic bombing of Hiroshima. As I was a 13-year-old schoolgirl and as a member of the student mobilization project, I was assigned to, together with 30 other students, to work at the military headquarters to act as um, decoding assistant. On August 6, 1945, at 8.15 a.m., I suddenly saw the brilliant bluish-white flush outside the window. I remember the sensation of floating in the air. When I regained the consciousness in the total darkness and silence, I found myself pinned in the rubble of the collapsed building. I began to hear my classmates' faint voices. Mother, help me. God, help me. Then suddenly, some hands started shaking my left shoulder, and the man's voice said, don't give up, keep moving, keep pushing. I'm trying to free you. You see the light coming through that opening. Crawl towards it. Get out of here as quickly as possible. By the time I came out, the debris was on fire. That meant most of my classmates were burned to death alive. The soldier ordered me and a few other surviving girls to escape to the nearby hillside. Although it was morning, it was as dark as twilight because of the dust and smoke in the air. I saw streams of stunned people slowly shuffling from the center of the city. For the nearby hill. There were bleeding, ghostly figures. They were naked and tattered, burned, blackened, and swollen. Parts of their bodies were missing, flesh and skin hanging from their bones, some with their eyeballs hanging in their hands. We girls joined the ghostly procession, carefully stepping over the dead and dying. There was deathly silence, broken only by the moans of the injured and their pleas for water. At the foot of the hill was the army training ground about the size of two football fields. Practically every bit of it was covered with the dead and injured who were desperately begging, often in faint whispers, water, water, please give me water. But we had no containers to carry any water we went to a nearby stream to wash the blood and dirt from our bodies. Then we tore off our blouses, soaked them with water, and hurried back to hold them to the mouth of the dying, who desperately sucked in the moisture. We kept busy at this task all day. We did not see any doctors or nurses. When darkness fell, we sat on the hillside and watched the entire city burn. Numbed and stunned by the massive and 
grotesque scale of death and suffering we had witnessed. Thus my beloved city of Hiroshima suddenly became desolation with heaps of ashes and rubble, skeletons and blackened corpses. Out of a population of about 360,000, most of whom were non-combatant women, children and elderly, became victim of the indiscriminate massacre of the atomic bombing. By the end of 1945, approximately 140,000 had perished. And as of present day, about and at least 260,000 have perished because of the effects of the blast heat and radiation. My own age group of over 8,000 grade 7 and grade 8 students from all the high schools in the city were engaged in the task of clearing fire lanes in the center of the city. Many of them were killed by the heat of about 7 thousand to eight thousand degree Celsius. Many were simply vaporized. Radiation, the unique characteristic of the atomic bombing, affected people in a random way, some fatally and others years later by the delayed effects and it is still killing today, 66 years later. In spite of the characteristic effects of the atomic bombing, the unimaginable defeat of Japan and the humiliation of occupation by foreign troops, we survivors were able to begin to see the meaning of our survival in terms of historical perspective and global context and transcend our personal tragedies. We became convinced that no human being should ever have to repeat our experience of inhumanity illegality, immorality, and cruelty of atomic warfare. And we identified our mission as warning the world of the danger of nuclear weapons. Convinced that humanity and nuclear weapon cannot coexist and that as the only path to security and the preservation of humankind and civilization for future generations. We have been speaking out around the world for the past several decades for the total, the total abolition of nuclear weapons. To you, the participants of this forum, I wish you productive and successful deliberations. Having struggled for a few decades to introduce disarmament education into the Canadian educational system, I believe it is most urgent and imperative to develop effective disarmament education in a multidisciplinary approach through collaboration among government, educational systems, and the communities. Thank you.